I want to begin with a nigun, with a wordless melody, and right off the bat, I want to say it's a more elaborate one. It has three parts. So if you find yourself going to the mind of, I don't know this, or this is too hard, I want you to see if you can catch even one note that you can join me, and we'll have a chance to layer on some words and understand more of the meaning. But let's start just with the direct experience of music together. So why that melody? Why that melody, which is known as Bati Lagani? It was written by our teacher, Reb Zalman of Blessed Memory. Today, the 5th of Tammuz is also Reb Zalman's yard site. And I know we are marking other passings, some of us coming from funerals this morning, remembering others at this time. And this time, to just to bring all of those beloved teachers and family and friends and they're welcome in this space. The transcription on the sheet music, uh, as I receive this, of that particular melody says, in reverent memory of his Rebbe, Yosef Yitzhak Schneerson, the sixth of the Chabad Lubavitch Rebbe's. It's a, a complicated melody, and it also is a complicated text. So I wanted to take a look at these exceptional verses, share some soaking in the words of their Torah, to sing it again, and then to share some silence together. So it's actually a series of three verses, three excerpts of three verses, all from the Song of Songs. So the first verse, Dome dodi litzvi o the ofer ha'ayalim, my beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. There he stands behind our wall, gazing through the window, peering through the lattice. Hine ze omed achar kotleinu. Here, behold, wow. I gave another teaching. I'm just remembering now. I'm just, this word hine, behold, sometimes translated in that old English, lo, L-O. Hine, hine ze. Here is the lover standing just outside the wall, peering through the window. Mashgiach mina chalon. You may know the word mashgiach from the kosher supervisor, who is the mashgiach, looking over the kitchen, supervising the kitchen. Shagach, looking. Mina chalonot, looking through the windows. Meitzitz, mina harakim, peering. And this word of tzitz is also like the sparkle, the shine in your eyes. So right now, is there something just right beyond the wall? So often we're armored or buttressed against the forces of life. Is there something peering through, flirting from the other side? 
awakening love. I happen to live somewhere where I do see gazelles or young stags, probably they're more ayalot, deer, but they're always breathtaking. They're always so vital and graceful. Can you soften to just this, Hineza, right now, a sense of something lovingly looking or seeking your attention? Or perhaps you're on the other side of the wall. There is a clear object of your desire and love whose attention you seek. What does it feel like to peer through the lattice, through the network, through the mesh work with the desire to share your love? Bati legani achoti kala. I have come to my garden, my own, my bride. Reb Zalman now takes us a jump to another chapter of Song of Songs, the opening verse of chapter five. Ariti mori im besami. I have plucked my myrrh and spice. Now myrrh is a essential oil or a fragrance or an incense that's made, harvested by scoring the trunk of a bark of the myrrh tree and gathering the sap as it weeps from, from the trunk. In Tammuz, this month is a time of tears in the tradition, and they're bittersweet. So perhaps today has not been so fragrant so lush or delightful as a garden, but what would it be to come into your own garden? What is a place of verdant support for your heart? It may be in your own backyard. It may be a place you get to visit only once in a while. Maybe it's somewhere you've never been but have a deep dream connection to what would it be to Bati Lagani, to come into your own garden and there find the beloved to be intoxicated with the sense and the sense of love. And the Yeshena Velibi air. I was asleep, but my heart was wakeful. I know several other songs for this part. These words are not included in this chant, but I always read this as Halavai She'ani Yeshena. If only my sense of I were to fall asleep, then I would realize that my heart is always awake. The, the, the we of the heart. Kol Dodi Dofek Pitchili, the voice of the beloved Knox, wakening me open to me, my own, my darling, my friend. The word for pulse, as we can feel in our chests or at our wrist, is knocking, pulse knocking. The beloved is quickening our hearts as we sing this together. These three parts, there's a little bit of repetition. Part one is Hine ze o med achar kot lehinu, achar kot lehinu. Mashkiach min achalonot, metzitz min acharakim. Let's try that again. Hine ze o med achar kot lehinu. Achar kot lehinu, mashkiach min achalonot, mitzitz min acharakim. Bati legani, achotichala, rit 
ki mauri im de sami batin ve kahani akhoti kha lari ti mauri isami good appreciation for even trying let's try doing parts a and b again in is o humed akhar kot lenu akhar kot lenu behind the walls me hashki akh min akhalonot mitsit min akharakim kam belave batir ka Achoti chala riti mori im besami batin lekani achoti chala riti mori im besami kol dovek pitrili. Called on the door of a pitrilly. a hoti rayati. Pitrilly, pitrilly. But in the garden, a hoti hariti mori in the Let's sit together in our garden, allowing ourselves to be loved. Thank you so much, my friend. Beautiful. Thanks for mentioning to that today's Reb Zalman's yard site. For those who are not familiar, Reb Zalman Shakhtar Shalomi really just had an outsized influence on worldwide Judaism and through the Jewish renewal movement. One of the things that for me is so attractive about Jewish mysticism as represented by Reb Zalman is the idea of Judaism as a path of love which for many people, of course, it's not something that they necessarily picked up along the way earlier in life. The idea of sitting in a garden of love and of peeking through the window and having the beloved like searching through and looking for you, which is a recurrent theme in a lot of Jewish mystical texts, of course, and in Shir Hashim, the Song of Songs, biblically, really powerful, the idea of these lovers in search of each other. Maybe you can say a little bit about that, because I know it's core to your rabbinate and the work that you do, both musically and rabbinically. The question form I would put that in is, what do you say to people who say, number one, never heard of that, a loving God who's in search of me, who just wants to uh, shower me with love? That's, that's question number one. Question number two, as I have for people, including myself, is once you come to believe that, what, what makes it so hard to receive that love, you know, to take it in? Why do we push it away? Why do we run from it? Why do we avoid it? Two big questions there for you, my friend. Yeah, softball. Well, let's just start with the first the idea of maybe you could speak a little bit personally about this, if you would, about the God of love who is looking through the window. Yeah, there's a Yiddish phrase that I was almost allergic to, and I don't remember it in the original, but it translates to, it's hard to be a Jew. And I did not mm. want to take that on as the bag I was carrying or the cart I was pulling. Actually, when Reb Zalman agreed I was uh, a good candidate for his ordination, for his smicha, he said, you have the strength to pull the cart, but I don't want to schlep this baggage of it's hard, it's burdensome, it's painful. And of course, it's all of those things. And it's only worth it, worthwhile if there's also some precious cargo. And that is the love and the beauty that is 
often just overwhelmed and covered over with tremendous loss, the sense of disappearance, with personal and historical and transpersonal trauma, and then on the individual level with shame and fear. Unfortunately, I don't really know any other way to find the God who wants to love us other than through direct experience. And as okay. the psalmist says, taste and see God is good. But that could be written a thousand times. You could plaster it on your forehead or tattoo it on your arm. And if you haven't seen or tasted that, it's just dogma. It's just words. I've learned that by being near people like Reb Zalman and other great teachers and other teachers of place, beautiful places that have allowed me to release and let go of that fear and that shame and relax into the possibility that, yeah, maybe, maybe it's okay. And maybe we are loved and maybe the universe is conspiring to shower us with blessings. Rob Bresny wrote a book called Pronoia, which is the antidote to paranoia, Pronoia. Pronoia, what is yeah. it, which means? The, the universe is conspiring to shower oh. us with blessings as, oh, okay. uh -huh. as the opposite of paranoia. Like every, the world is out to get me. Uh, the, the, the walls are caving in. Aren't, isn't it the same thing? <laughs> yes. The world's out to get me, You're out to get me with love. Yeah. Right. Save me. Yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. You know, it names so many of the obstacles or the, the sources of resistance or kick in. And I'd say also just to tack on to that beautiful answer that simply being able to notice and name the resistance without judging ourselves for it, right? The shame and the fear, whatever it is in any of us that feels unworthy of that love, whatever the source of that may be, like you said, you named all the different sources of trauma to be able to notice that and even to love that too. And even right? if love this, doesn't come first to meet ourselves in that, the compassion is so vast the ways we meet ourselves with where we are. For some people, the theist or the deistic language doesn't work, but that awareness or that consciousness that wants to meet us where we are is so present and clear and open that it is infinitely patient with us until we're ready to be honest with how we're experiencing our experience of self yeah. or non-self or other or all of that. Um, and also another piece of that is the direct experience through music. There's mm -hmm. something that physiologically it helps brings the hemispheres of the, of the brain together. It also starts to not necessarily blur the boundaries, but to create a medium in which what's on one side of the wall and on the other is really not two. Right. Laura's got a really good question here. The idea of Hineza powerfully brings me fully present to observing and absorbing what's before me. Would you please speak to the interaction and differences between Hineze and Hineni? That's interesting. That's an interesting mm. question. I didn't even notice until I saw the screen sh shining back at me that my one of my previous IGS offerings was two verses, one that started with Hinema tovuma naim, how good it is when we well together, and ze hayom asa havaya, this is the day. And, and this verse brings those two beautiful, I mean, we could spend a day on hine um, or on a day on ze. Off the cuff, I would just play with the, the apparent difference between place and time, mm -hmm. like here in the sense of now, what is happening now, and this in the world of form or, or of objects. And when those two are not two, right? When we're just fully here, you name me, here I am. That was a little bit playful, but I think there's something there. I also like the way we often encounter the word ze as haze, like manish tanaha laila haze, or shehechianu vikiyamanu vihigyanu lezman haze. I know I just threw a lot of Hebrew out there, but in the four questions at the Passover Seder, or in the blessing that we say when we do something new or arrive in an auspicious moment, haze is a, pa a palindrome. Hey, Zion, hey. Hine is also a palindrome. Hey, nun, hey. So these senses of connection, of presence, mm -hmm. of dvekut, of belonging, of feeling okay, fundamentally all right with our place in the universe, somehow reaches like a palindrome f from where we're coming from to where we're going. And we find our consonant right in the middle of that vowel space. I'm in Manhattan looking across my air shaft at a brick wall, but you had me sitting in the garden while we were sitting there and the fragrance of the garden, in my mind's eye, in my heart mind, I could actually have a sense 
of the pleasantness of sitting in my gun or sitting in this collective gun. One of the dangers of this post-game show here is getting analytical about it. And I want to, I selfishly and otherwise would like to extend it. So maybe one more round of the nigun and the and the words of Shir Hashirin from Song of Songs. I want to say one more thing about scent and memory, because the interpersonal neurobiology of this is so powerful. The Kabbalists point out that the sense of scent is never mentioned in the, in the exile from the garden. Like they see the fruit, they hear the snake, they taste it, they touch the tree, but scent is never there. So in a way, the way our sense memory and even the rhinencephalon, it goes straight to the brain. The cranial nerve between the nose, it, it's a direct connection. So even breathing in the memory of a favorite tree, a favorite flower, a, a, a gorgeous sunset or a place of safety actually activates the same neural um, pathways and the physiological circuitry of returning home in that sense. <laughs> Mori in the sun.